For a webcam, the Elgato Facecam is amazing. And in this video, I'm gonna share why I love it using it for Zoom. This Elgato face cam compared to other 1080p 60 frames per second webcams on paper seems overpriced and marketed as a premium and the ultimate webcam. The question is why? What are you actually getting for that premium price point? Because there are affordable 1080p 60 frames per second webcams from popular brands to quickly elevate your Zoom meetings for under $100. Looking into the webcam from Elgato, I was excited to try this out. Looking at DSLR or mirrorless cameras that also can record at 60 frames per second at 1080p, like this Sony A5100 with this 16 millimeter Sigma lens, is because I wanted to elevate the quality Looking at a mirrorless camera or DSLR, we obviously can see that there's a bigger sensor, there's a bigger lens. And to get that beautiful image at the highest quality, you're gonna be paying for the camera body, the lens, a capture card, and if you're planning to have this as a dedicated webcam, you will want a dummy battery for continuous power. So the premium all out ultimate webcam really is a setup with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So what makes this better than other webcams that even offer 4K capabilities like the Logitech Brio? The Elgato face cam is equipped with a prime lens, which is all glass, with an aperture of f2.4 and a focal length of 24 millimeters, giving this webcam an amazing image quality that is super sharp. The low aperture can provide a nice bokeh effect or blurry background like you can see behind me. And because this is a prime lens with a nice focal length of 24 millimeters, there is no autofocus and provides excellent fixed focus within a certain distance from the lens, which according to Elgato is between 12 to 47 inches. So let's head to my desk and see the quality using the face cam to record this portion of the video. Okay, so now we are recording from the Elgato face cam through OBS. I am loving OBS again. I stopped using OBS because I switched over to the Mac Mini M1 and shout out to OBS. Now you can download OBS Studio that is now native with the M1 chip. So I'm super excited to start using OBS Studio a lot more. And if you wanna see some videos on OBS Studios and how I use it and the settings that I use, let me know in the comments below. So using this webcam, I am really loving the quality. There's a reduced latency, reduced lag, because this actually sends uncompressed data to your streaming software, regardless if it's OBS Studio or using Zoom for your Zoom meetings. Now, depending on your environment, you're gonna get a really nice out-of-the-box look for natural light or depending on your environment. I'm using a key light here as an example with a filler light, which is right behind me that is actually shining against the wall. It is, the wall is literally like less than an arm length away, which is perfect because I'm an arm length away from the camera. So I'm within that 12 to 47 inches. So I should be in great focus and dialed in. Now this is an impressive overall quality in the image compared to other 1080p cameras, ones that are the same price, cheaper, or even more expensive when it's dialed in through the Camera Hub software. So there are a few things that you need to know about this camera. One, this webcam actually doesn't come with a built-in mic. And you'd notice that I'm using an external mic. This is a Shure SM7B. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a huge advocate to use external mics for your Zoom meetings. And if you only had a budget to choose between video upgrade or audio upgrade, I always recommend to choose audio. With that being said, most webcams that do have built-in mics, the audio honestly is pretty terrible. So for some, not having a built-in mic is a negative. 
For me, it doesn't really matter because I'm always using an external mic. Now, another caveat there is the reason why built-in mics are pretty popular and a lot of people will use them even though the audio is terrible is that the audio and the video will be synced properly. For me, I am not going to do any changes as this is all running through OBS Studio and I'm not doing any delay. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Is the sync there? Now, if you do use OBS Studio, especially for streaming, you can change the delay depending on the mic or the system that you're using because this is running through my Rodecaster Pro, which might be a little bit different in delay on how it syncs up if you're gonna be using a built-in camera on something else or a USB mic. If you are looking for a plug and play webcam where you can set it and forget it, this may not be the webcam for you. The reason why I'm saying that is because this is a great webcam out of the box. I feel the out of box picture or overall image is the same, if not even worse than cheaper 1080p 60 frames per second webcams that you just plug and play and forget it. You're gonna be paying a little bit more and unless you take the time to download the software and take a look and tweak the settings to really dial in your shot, you're not really gonna get what you paid for. So let's talk about the software for a moment. The software is from Algato, it's the Camera Hub. Let's take a look at it right here. I'm gonna put it right about here so you can see it. So what's really nice about this is that you can tweak this similar to a DSLR or mirrorless camera. This is really taking it a step above, really dialing your shot. So for zoom, you can notice that I have my field of view set to 77.6 degrees. So it's a little bit tighter. The widest field of view that you can get for this camera is 83 degrees. Then you can also dial in the picture by changing the contrast, the saturation and sharpness. This is my settings right here. I have the contrast of 50%, saturation 60%, and sharpness plus two. Also exposure, you can have an automatic exposure, test it and see if you like it. For me, I have it manual. manual. There you can change the shutter speed, the ISO, and of course, white balance. And this is awesome because you can set it to automatic if you don't know how to do that or you don't wanna take the time to, to really dial it in. So I have mine not on automatic and I manually set it at 4,500. Processing, I have it on and what's great about noise reduction, it does give you an option to change the frequency in case you have any lights that are flickering. What's nice is nothing is flickering from what I can see on the screen. So you can really dial in. Now the cool thing about this software is that the Elgato face cam comes in with built-in memory. So you can actually save the settings. And this is really, really important because this differentiates from a lot of different webcams that come with software. So what do I mean? When we save these settings, it will save it right to the webcam. So if I were to plug, unplug this and put it onto a different computer or laptop, my settings are saved because it was saved on the webcam. Unlike other webcams that do come with software, when you reboot your computer, you restart your computer, or you change it to a different computer, you have to redial in your settings to get the picture or the shot that you're looking for. So a great positive, love this software, and I love that the Elgato face cam has that ability. This is the Elgato face cam through OBS. Now let's switch and see how this looks on the receiving end of a Zoom meeting. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, so now we're on a Zoom call using the Elgato face cam. So what you're seeing here as I'm doing is I'm actually recording the Zoom call. So the Zoom will actually show you what the receiver is actually seeing. So hopefully you can see the quality and I wanna compare this with also an internal webcam or at least a webcam that's being used through a MacBook Pro. 16 inch model and I believe it's a 720p. If I'm wrong, you'll see it below. 
So now it should give you the similar view of the webcam. So this is the quality that you would get if you were receiving on a Zoom call using a internal or a built-in webcam. So hopefully you can see the difference and then you can tell me, leave the comments below if you feel that the Elgato face cam is 100% better. You can see it's a really good quality of what they're receiving. And what's nice, I'm doing like little to no color grading at all in edits, very, very minimal. I wanna give you what I see in OBS on this screen and I still think it looks really, really sharp. I think it really looks really good. I believe that it is a way better image quality than the built-in webcam on most, if not all computers, laptops, etc. So if you found value in this video, you know what to do. If you wanna see more videos like this one, go ahead and click one of these two videos. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.